Hello, boys and girls. It's Fog, and welcome back. Uh, first of all, let me start by saying how overwhelmed I am at the response of uh, my last video. That wow, just just wow. That's awesome. I uh, appreciated all the comments and all the and, and and just everything. Just overwhelmed. But the reason I'm making this video is that I wanted to show you that this is. The SLD Mark IV, or the Silent Light Detector Mark IV. Four, because there are four detectors. I've made a couple of optimizations. I did a little bit of work to try and cram as much of the redstone in there as tightly as I could in a short amount of time. There's probably a slightly more efficient way of doing this, but at the moment I don't know what it is. And uh, so, yeah, this, in this incorporates three of those silent light detectors. And, uh, sorry, three. This incorporates four of those silent light detectors in one relatively compact unit. Yeah, you could make this smaller if you used pistons or something like that. But then it wouldn't be silent, would it? But because it has four of them, it's much more responsive. You don't have to wait nearly as long for the, uh, the change to take effect. And, uh, yeah, it's just kind of fun to build. So... I thought I'd show you how to build it. All right, let's get building. First, we're going to make sure we've got our S-Bud in the right orientation. So we're going to put down a quick S-Bud, make sure we've got the orientation correct. And there we go. That's correct. Now, if you build this in the wrong orientation, uh, this is what you're going to see. It flashes like that, and then the torch burns out. It has been pointed out to me, and actually I already knew this, uh, that if that happens, you can extend the bud like that, and then it will work. And yes, I already knew that, people. Uh, that's, that's great. Uh, I don't want to do that because I want to keep it in its small configuration, like this one. Okay. The other thing that, was, that I was reminded of by you good people is that if you use a half slab instead of glowstone, that will also work. And yes, I've just burned out the torch. There you go. And and yes, I I did remember that. Uh, I've I've heard that. Uh, I had completely forgotten it. So shame on me. Uh, we're going to use half slabs because that's the better way to go. Um, so anyway. You can also do that with stairs, upside down stairs, anything that doesn't conduct redstone, but that uh, will let you place redstone dust on it will work. So we're going to start with a configuration like this, where each of these buds is two blocks apart. And that's important because if we don't do that, we're going to, they're going to interfere with each other. You put them any closer and they'll interfere and we don't want the interference. So that's why we're building them where we are. So put down your four buds just like this. And once you've got your four buds, then we're ready to continue. All right, once you've got your four buds, then we need to build the platform. Put, put a couple of grass blocks over the top of the buds. And then we're going to fill in everything in between those with grass, just like this. And then before I go any further, I like to put down the pressure plates because that will help me visualize where the grass block is that is over the bud. And then we'll go in and put another row of grass right around that, like this. And then it's time for our dispensers. Now look at where your, where your torches are on the S-Buds. And the dispensers need to be right here in relation to those torches. Just like that. And then we're going to put a couple more, uh, a couple of more uh, pressure plates right around there to contain the water. And there you go. Now the next step is we're going to build a wall at this level behind each of these. 
Now I'm using grass for this because the more grass we have around, the less time it will take for our grass to regrow. So yeah, using grass is a good idea. You do want to be careful though. If this is exposed and not built underground, then you might find that you have Endermen stealing your grass blocks. So <laughs> something to be aware of. Enderman damage can be a problem. Okay, so once you've got that, let's go ahead and put our water buckets in each of our dispensers. And we're just going to do all four of them at once. Do this really quick. I really like this new UI, by the way. Uh, it, it's much easier to find things once you get used to it. So props to Mojang for the new UI. I like it a lot. There's a lot of things in the new build that I like. Uh, by the way, in case it wasn't obvious, I'm still on one of the snapshot builds. Uh, you can't do this with released Minecraft. Okay, so, whoops. Now that we've got our buckets in there, we're going to build our ground level up above them, like this. This should look familiar if you watch the other video. Just cover all this up here. Just like this. There we go. Now, one of the little innovations that I've added to this is it, if you go ahead and put a button here, it makes it easier to get your water in and out if you need to like, kick the machine in the pants or whatever to get it to do the right thing. Okay, now that we've got our buttons in place and we've covered up the mechanism, let's go put in our boats. There and there. And there and there. The next step is to get our power up to our dispensers and we're going to do that a little differently this time. We're going to put a block here, we're going to put a block right there, and we're going to put a block right here. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side here, just like that. We're going to put a repeater here set to four ticks, although you could probably get away with doing it a little less if you wanted to. But four ticks works, and that's nice to say. We're going to put some redstone there, and some redstone there, and some redstone there, and some redstone there. So it looks like that. Then we're going to put a torch there, a torch there, a torch there, and a torch there. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. At this point, our light detectors are basically done. All we have to do now is close them off with a little bit of glass keep things from falling in there and messing with the boats just like this all right now before we proceed with the wiring there is one more crucial step that we need to do uh, right now each of our detector blocks should have grass on it because we've placed grass blocks but when night comes we want that grass to die and that means we have to start with water there and so for each of these go around and hit these buttons once and make sure you've got water over each of those grass blocks otherwise your detector won't function correctly because the grass will never die okay now now our detectors are done and now we just need to do the wiring so let's get busy and start doing that each of these detectors has a ring of pressure plates around it but we really only need to pull the signal off one pressure plate for each of them and we can pull that off right under this block right here so this block right here is going to be powered when that pressure plate is active and we can verify that by coming back here hit this button and that'll take the water away which will trigger the plate and you can see that does in fact turn on that redstone. So put the water back because it won't work if we don't. So for each of these come around and put this block right here with a dab of redstone on it and that's where we're going to hang our wiring off of. Those are our outputs. Just like that and over here. 
Now, off of each of these, we're going to build our edge detectors. So build out two and over like this. So you have a little two by three area. Put some redstone down like, whoops, not like that, just like that. And then we're going to put another block on top of that redstone right there. We're going to put a yellow block right here. So you've got something that looks like that. Now put a repeater there at the default and a repeater there set at four ticks. And I'm going to use a green block here and a red block there to remind myself that this is the rising edge detector and this is the trailing edge detector. So, or falling edge detector. Whoops, sorry. I want to put this torch on the inside like that. Just like that. So there's our detector. When this guy turns on, this will flash. When this guy turns off, this will flash. And we're going to build the same thing right next to it, only we're going to build it mirror image. So you have something that looks like that. And then you just go build exactly the same thing on the other side. Now that we have our edge detectors, all we have to do is wire them up. So I'm going to start by wiring the falling edge right here. Put a couple of blocks there so that we can pull signals from these torches right here. And we'll pull them out to about here and put a repeater here. I like to set this at four ticks just to make sure I have a very long pulse. And we'll run that through there. Yes, I left that gap on purpose. If you forget, don't worry. It's easy to put it back, of course. And, and of course, I've missed. Okay, well, easy enough to fix. <laughs> At four ticks. So there we have that. And we need to put a block here and a torch here, and that's going to be the bottom end of our NOR latch. Now we need to build the green line or the rising edge line. Start with a block there and pull it in. Obviously, I could bring this down to the ground if I wanted to, but the thought is that this is probably being built underground. So if that's the case, then just don't excavate below these. But either way, this works. So, and bring it back through here like this. And I'm missing a torch right there. And right there. Whoops. <laughs> I accidentally hit the wrong button. There we go. And now we'll put redstone here, 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 and all the way along here. Put a repeater here, set to four ticks again. Bring redstone all the way across here. Repeater set to four ticks. And redstone along here to tie everything together. And now we have hooked up all of our detectors. And now all that's left is to complete the RS NOR latch by putting a torch right there. That completes the latch. And now let's hook up our output by just putting a lamp there. And we're done. Now let's see if it works. Night falls. Grass begins to die almost immediately and turns on our light. The others should follow relatively shortly. Here, we'll move over here so we can watch them both. And daylight returns, and it doesn't take too long before the lights shut off again. And there you are. 
Okay, so a couple other quick comments before I sign off. Um, the whole circuitry on the outside can be made much more simple if all you care about is having the lights turn on when it gets dark. Because then you can just take all of those outputs and hook them up through repeaters to a common bus and you've basically got one big OR gate where if any of them turns on, your lights turn on. Um, so if all you care about is turning the lights on, then then that's great. You, you know, eliminate all the extra fluff and you've got a much smaller build. Uh, I chose to go for the bigger one, more complete one, just because I could. Uh, if anybody knows how to make the complete edge triggered version uh, a little smaller, I'd love to know. So uh, let me know if you can come up with a better way of doing all of that wiring. Anyhow, thanks so much for watching and for subscribing and for all your comments. It's very appreciated. Uh, I look forward to doing some more cool stuff soon, and we will talk to you next time.